hello everybody and welcome to my channel you've reached episode number two of inmate to roommate we're just gonna get right into it i'm wasting no time okay so these hoes sorry we start this show ending off when these three females who i guess intended on doing something actual with an s in the front with mark came here you were re you was real trifling for this this is the kind of activity you set up when you have your own place or you have money to afford a hotel not this trifling oh i'm gonna have these females meet me to where i'm being picked up in jail and did all three of them need to come no they did not and this one in the pink shirt looking all doopy and they all look doopy but she looking all doopy like a ding dong dum dum looking with the stupidest the stupidest ass face i've ever seen in my damn life because the facial expression on her just really makes you want to smack the hell out of her because like I really want to smack sense into all three of you females. Do you not have nothing going on for yourselves? That's what I want to ask. Do you have anything going on for yourself? Obviously not. Obviously not. But anyway, Veda says that these three young ladies just popped up when Mark got out of jail. And he thinks Mark shouldn't have just sprung them up on him like that. Especially now, the timing was not good. Mark's over here telling the girls, I'm glad you showed up. I'm really sorry, but Mark, the way you talk is so damn irritating. I don't know what it is about the inflection of your voice that irks the hell out of me. I think it's because it sounds like you got marbles in your mouth. What is up with all these marble mouths on this show this year? Anyway, though, I didn't see the first season, so. Hmm. So, Annalisa says that she thinks that Mark is wasting their time. You think? You think, Annalisa? Is that what you think? Interesting. None of this should surprise you, actually. Veda says it's not a good way to start, but in his eyes, they got to keep moving forward. Oh, I can let these I can let these little tricks take Mark to their house. I could do that if that's what you'd like. I could have did that. That's what I would have done. They want to come meet him at the freaking um, correctional center or whatever when he's getting out. Then they can give him a place to live and I'm going to go back home and I'm going to live in my, um, in my peace. That's what I'm going to do. Mark is over here asking Veda and them if they ate already. He's ready to go get some food and ask them if they ate already. And they said no, whatever. So they about to leave. But then he asked these females, are they going to come? And they're like, yeah, all right. Yo, this, this girl right here in the peach sweater. I don't know why she irking me. Her face is irking me. Everything about her is irking me. That puppy dog look that she keep giving him is so annoying and sickening. Like, girl, if you don't get some self-esteem... Okay, I'm sorry, but damn. Mark says with his mumbly mouth, if you don't open your mother freaking mouth to speak, I swear to God. Mark says he feels the tension that the girls came. Well, maybe you should have said something. Maybe you should have told them, hey, I got some friends coming by. And they're more than friends. But anyway, why couldn't these friends meet you like a week after you've already been home? Like, I don't understand why these girls had to come meet you at the, at the prison when you knew that that same day you were going to be meeting Veda and Annalisa. Like I said earlier, I'd have left you right there. They want to trail behind you like the little puppy dogs they are. They can give you a puppy dog house to stay in because you wouldn't be staying with me. He said they mad that the girls came, but today's about me right now. Um, I'm going to need you to get your own place before you thinking it's about you because it's really not. And that's probably how you got yourself in trouble and had to go away for seven years because you had that mentality. Oh, it's not about nobody else. It's only for me. It's only about me. Mark thinks that he's calling the shots and I'm already tired of him. He says, Annalisa, he calls her Annalisa. Her name is Annalisa. I'm sure when she spoke to you, she said how her name was pronounced, fool. He said, he's going with Annalisa and Veda to a restaurant. And these girls are going to follow behind them. So these girls added themselves to the restaurant get together. And then they're going to ask Diaja, are you here for the ride? What does that mean, ma'am? Is Diaja a hoe like y'all? Most definitely not. Diaja says, as you, as you can read here, I'm their daughter. And then Mark says right in front of Diaja's face, this is Miss Suspicious that I was telling you about. Mark, you can go back to that empty wooden field like a scarecrow, like the scarecrow that you are. You can stand out there and, and go live out there. You're not coming to my house acting like this with my daughter and being disrespectful to us. I don't even know why y'all allowed these females to go to the restaurant with y'all. They didn't even speak to y'all when they pulled up. And now they at the restaurant. I don't want to sit with these freaking strangers that don't have no kind of respect. I don't know why y'all putting up with this crap. So Diaja says, I thought we were supposed to be picking you up. And Diaja says, but you have other people coming to pick you up. 
He says, nah, it's more like I'm an amazing guy. The word I want to say, I don't want to offend nobody, so I ain't going to say it. But you, you literally have nothing going for you right now to be so damn cocky. I do not like this man. I do not like this man at all. And Diaja says that one thing she doesn't like is he's over here acting cocky like he got this harem of girls, like he all that. And she was just balling up her hand into a fist. Annalisa says to Mark, I wish you would have told us before we drove four hours to come get you that you had other females coming to get you. And Annalisa says we need to be on the same page and Mark agrees. He's only agreeing so that he can eat his food. Veda says we, you know, we're just we're glad to have you here and we're glad to help. That's not how I would have ended that conversation. And after Veda says we're excited that we can help, Annalisa says, as long as you're respectful. Annalisa says that she was raised by her grandparents and her grandparents were from the old school. You were pretty much in line. She says, when an adult asks questions, you just did what you were supposed to do. But I want you to keep in mind, Annalisa, this is not a child that y'all taking in. This is a grown ass man. Okay. And I think that's where you're a little bit confused. I don't even know why you have that analogy of, you know, my grandparents raised me and they raised me to not ask no questions or not talk back. Rather, when it came to adults, this man is a grown adult. He's not a child. He's not even related to you. So Annalisa tells Mark that he needs to stay focused. And Mark says, you know how many times I've been told that? And Annalisa says, calm down. And y'all not even at the house yet. And there's already going to be problems. I've seen the trailer like all of you, but um, I'm already uncomfortable as to where all this is going to go. Mark says, let me enjoy being free. You know, if you see me slipping, fine. But let me be free. Let me just enjoy this freedom. And as you can see, Annalisa is ready to go off already. Annalisa says that Mark is talking to her as if she's a peer of his and she's his elder. She says it's taking everything in her to continue to be respectful. So Mark has the nerve to tell Annalisa, please stop, you're ruining the day. And Annalisa says, don't tell me to stop. Mark says he's a grown man. And Annalisa says something. It's hard to understand what the hell she said with it because it was kind of muffly, but it sounded like she was saying, let me say what I have to say. Mark says that it's rough being in prison for almost eight years. And Annalisa is pretty much taking the fun out of his day. So Diaja asks Mark, are you going back with us or are you going back with these girls? And this girl back here with the smirk, I could smack the smirk right off her face. I would drop him right over at her house. Diaja says, because we're assuming that you're coming back home with us. Mark asks Diaja, I don't know why the hell he asked her. <laughs> he asked Diaja, what do you want me to do? She said, I don't want you to do ish. <laughs> Like, she couldn't care less. She would prefer him not to come to her parents' house, honestly. Diaja says, I want you to tell me what you're going to do. Mark says that he's going to go to the house, but he's leaving with these girls. Diaja says, you're a grown man. I'm just asking questions. And Annalisa says, there's a side of her that does not tolerate disrespect. And Annalisa says, he does not want to see the side of her that doesn't tolerate disrespect. Annalisa says, we all got to follow rules in life. And Mark smirks said that. Or snickers, is, it's the better word. He snickered at that. Mark says that he feels that him and Annalisa are going to clash. But in the end, he's going to win. So today is the day that Devin gets out of prison. Daniel says that he knows Devin's grandparents. And he let them know that he would like to help Devin on a new journey. I don't know. He said <laughs> uh, in a new way of life. Like, you know what's really sad? When somebody's relatives don't want nothing to do with them, you know something's wrong, okay? And nobody don't want to even deal with Devin. His sister doesn't want him. His grandparents don't want him. I don't know what the hell happened to his parents because we ain't hearing about them. It says Devin is scheduled to be released today from Colorado Territorial Correctional Facility after serving three years for burglary. Daniel flew from Texas for the release and Devin's sister Carissa will be driving them to the prison. Devin is excited to be out and he's grateful that somebody's going to help him. And Daniel is saying, you know, we're hoping that a change of scenery will help you so Devin's out here getting dressed out in the street he got on boxers it's all good but um 
you know, his language is something that Daniel says they're going to have to talk about. You good luck trying to control somebody who just got out of prison's language, child. That's the least of your worries, language. Daniel says that he can't have his wife subjected to that. Daniel says that he is a boy in a man's body. This is Cindy. She is 56 and she lives in Vining, Minnesota. Cindy is missing her right foot. So Cindy, um, you think it's a good idea to have somebody in your house that's getting out of prison when you literally can't get up and run? I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm just saying for real. Like you literally can't just get up and run. Cindy says that she's disabled and she's unemployed. And at the beginning of COVID, she had a foot issue where she couldn't walk. When she was in the hospital is when she found out that she was diabetic. Sid I want to say Sydney. Cindy says now she needs a lot of help around the house and that's why she got a roommate from prison. Ma'am, the in the former inmate, well she's currently an inmate, who was going to be coming to Cindy's house is Jennifer and she's 34 years old. She is at the shack. Y'all are killing me with the names of these correctional centers. I promise you. I promise you. Okay. Anyway, the names have not gotten easier, folks. Shakopee Correction Center is where she's serving her seven-month sentence. And her charges was meth possession and sale of meth, I guess. Currently incarcerated at Shakopee in Minnesota. I've been in and out of prison for the past eight years. Back in 2016, I had got a first-degree charge. I spent two years incarcerated. I caught a new charge, fifth-degree possession of methamphetamine. And then my probation officer had came to my house and I had to drugs on my house. Jennifer has two children and she's hoping to get her kids back after she gains everybody's trust. Cindy says her friend Richard is the person who introduced her to Jennifer. Richard is the person that asked Cindy if she could move Jennifer in as a roommate. So that's a different story than what you told earlier. You know what? You guys on reality shows, y'all need to learn how to keep your lies together because the more you talk, the more your lies are revealed. I thought it was your idea, um, Cindy. You said it was your idea. Now you're saying it was your friend Richard's idea. So I don't know what the truth is, but guys, I put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video because they be lying sometimes. All right. I'm just reporting what I'm seeing on the show. And sometimes when I report stuff, it's conflicting, but that's not my fault. Well, not all the time. Most times, though, it's because of the people on the television show. They can't keep their lies straight. And my question is, why would Richard ask you to take her in? Why couldn't Richard take her in? Hmm? Mm -hmm. He has his freaking nerve and you have a lot of nerve saying yes. I mean, whatever. I don't get you people. Now, Cindy claims that it's because she has an extra bedroom. She says that she hasn't been down to visit Jennifer. I just want these people to open up their mouths when they talk. So she says that she's not big on writing letters. She hasn't written her anything. She hasn't been down to visit her, but she has spoken on the phone with her a few times. Cindy would like to have a nice, comfortable place for Jennifer to come out of jail to. So now Cindy's friend Angela comes over. So Angela's there painting cabinets and yeah, whatever. Angela asks Cindy if she's sure about this and Cindy says yes and no. Angela says that she doesn't think Cindy is fully prepared for the possibilities involving not only a roommate, but someone coming straight out of prison. Cindy says that she thinks it's a new environment, so it should go better for her there. Well, Cindy, I forgot to mention, is in a very small town. There's like 70 people in the entire town in Minnesota. Angela is telling her, look, there's just so much stuff she can do here before she says, you know what, um, I got to find something else to do. And that could possibly lead to her doing drugs again. Cindy admits that it is very secluded in her town. So Angela says, do you have any expectations or rules for Jennifer when she comes to the house? No men for the first six months and to be back at the house by 9 p.m. Girl, what do you think you're dealing with? A child? A teenager? Um, and then Angela says, well, if she doesn't already have a curfew from her probation. Angela says that she knows that Cindy has no idea how the drug world works. She herself is a recovering addict and was doing drugs for years. She says that she's struggled with addiction for over 20 years and she's seen people be successful and she's seen the opposite story. So Angela asks Cindy, how come she doesn't just go to her mom's house, pull up there since her kids are there? And Cindy says, because her and her mom don't get along. I, I wonder why, I wonder why. Angela says you don't see that as a red flag. Angela asks if Cindy knows what Jen's drug of choice was and Cindy doesn't even know. And Angela's like, what happens if she overdoses? What are you going to do then? And Angela says there's just a lot of factors that you're just not aware of. 
Cindy admits she really doesn't know what she's getting herself into. Cindy says she's kind of leery about things now and she has no idea how incarceration works because she's never been in jail, rather she's never been in prison herself. Cindy says this conversation was a wake up call and Angela says that she really does wish the best for Jennifer. And Angela says there's a very real possibility of it not going the way you think it's gonna go. Like it can go completely awful. Now we're here with Aaron and David and they're off to the house. David says that he doesn't know why Aaron can't stay with friends or family, but it's the opportunity for him to be able to do something that he's been thinking about for a long time. Aaron says that he was busted for selling while on probation and that's why he ended up going back to prison okay they worked on a few prison reform issues together and they did this for almost two years and six months before aaron was released david told him that he has a room that he can get aaron says the weird thing is they never spoken in person so aaron finds out that he's a teacher and he says before this day he had no idea about david's personal life so david says to Aaron after he's enjoying bacon for the first time in many years that there's a protest if you want to go um David do you think that's a good idea for somebody who just got out of prison to go to a protest I really believe that some of y'all know I believe that a lot of y'all are missing brain cells Aaron says before he gets involved with anything like that he wants to know more details more of the specifics Aaron says that it's surprising that David wants to go to a protest he said he just got out of jail he don't have no pockets yet because in prison they didn't have like a lot of pockets on their pants. They only had like one pocket. So yeah, he's like, he needs to slow the hell down. Aaron tells David he wants to be involved, but to be honest, there are people in prison that belong in prison. David is already saying because he doesn't really want to do the protest thing right now. He literally just got out of jail that they may not be on the same wavelength as far as how they feel about prison and the, <laughs> and the system. You have got to be kidding me. Now, Aaron is basically saying he needs to rebuild his life and he's tired and, you know, valid, valid reasons for why he wouldn't want to go off to a damn protest right after he got out of freaking jail, prison. Okay, if I say jail, y'all know what I mean. But anyway, David's like, oh no, like, really, David? You're ridiculous. So the family is riding back home without Mark. Mark says after the restaurant, he rode in the car with the girls to Annalisa's house. So they actually show up at Annalisa and Veda's house, the girls and Mark. And Annalisa says, I don't have a problem with the girls. They're, I'm not going to tell them that they can't come to my house right now. My issue is with Mark. Annalisa says that there's tension between Mark and herself because she didn't expect any of this. Guys, I'm trying so hard not to insult this man on my screen because he's so disrespectful. Mark says the first impression of the house is that it stinks. Worse than you? Because I know you you got a smell on you, buddy. That's all I'm going to say. He said their place is stale and old. Mark says it's not it and it's not where he's trying to be then pack your bags and find some place else to go fool mark asked to be shown his room and diaja's like peace out i'm out of here i'm over it veda's like i'm going to sleep and um i guess annalisa is going to be the one showing him where he's supposed to sleep at diaja says i pray that everything comes together but you better respect my mama. Mark said he sees the room and expected to have a bachelor pad and it looks like an abandoned house. You could be sleeping outside of the house, Mark. You better be grateful. He says he's not trying to be there. He might as well use that as a storage room. So Mark says to Annalisa, are you getting ready to go, go to sleep or what you about to do? And Annalisa says, no, I'm actually getting ready to sit down and talk to you. Mark says, I'm so, 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 so sorry. <laughs> Mark says, I'm so sorry. And Annalisa's like, what you gonna do, go to sleep? Mark said he's actually gonna leave. And Annalisa says, you're gonna leave? Mark says that he's gonna leave to go, quote, enjoy himself. Annalisa says, I understand that he's been in prison almost eight years, but it's just the consideration of when somebody lets you stay in their home. She says that he needs to be accountable and responsible. And she says that she's just disappointed. Annalisa says, I thought we were just going to, you know, sit and have a conversation since this is your first night. Oh Lord, this, this boy's getting disrespectful by the minute and I'm gonna call him a boy cause I'm, I'm an elder as well. Lord have mercy. He says to Annalisa, that is the problem with thinking cause sometimes you think wrong and you thought wrong if you was gonna come up in somebody else's house, not paying no rent with your own room, thinking you was gonna go back and forth without a care in the world. I... I'm only on episode number two 
And when this goes down in flames, I, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. Lisa said, I'm thinking wrong. And Mark is like, I didn't mean it like that. I just mean, you know, I've had a long day. You know exactly what you meant. And you meant what you said. Annalisa says she's given Mark 24 hours to sit down and have a conversation with her. She says Mark is not focused right now. Annalisa says he's going to end up back in prison. Daniel and Carissa are riding Devin back to, I guess, Carissa's house temporarily until they can fly back with Daniel. Daniel asks Devin, why did he go to prison? Devin explains that he has a long criminal history. Plainly, he says he gets high on men and then he goes around robbing people. Devin says when he's high, it's fun doing things that can get him killed, like being shot out at the cops or stealing and robbing people. Devin says that he can't forget what he did, but he can do better by moving forward and doing better with his life. So Devin says while they're sitting here in this eatery that parole has granted him 30 days before he has to return to Texas. So Devin pulls this thing where he wants to stay until the 28th of that month before having to go to Texas with Daniel to spend time with his family. They say so much on here. I swear they always say in too many words. Basically, Daniel said the plan was to go straight to Texas to his home. Daniel says it's a 13 hour ride and he's a bit upset that he's pulling this right now. Daniel says to Devin that he's not the type of person that takes change very well, but communication and honesty is important to him. Daniel says, let me do a little bit of praying and I will make a decision. Did you pray before you took him into your house? I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Just asking. Just asking. I mean, that's between you and the Lord. I'm just saying. Aaron says that David's house is cool. His room is big. Wait a minute, the room has its own bathroom? Oh my God, I'm so jealous. I've never been more jealous in my whole life. Aaron says that he hopes that David is being honest with everything that he's putting out there. Aaron says walking into this house is like walking into revolutionary headquarters. David eats, breathes, sleeps, and craps this, you know, what do you call it? Social injustice issues is what I will call it. David says that he has really a lot of free time for the past 10 years he's just been dedicated to this uh, movement next day is the next morning and Annalisa says that she was expecting Mark to be here he never came home which I am not even surprised about I mean are any of you surprised that he didn't come home quote home you know what I mean Annalisa says currently she doesn't think Mark is taking them seriously at all the guy has not even spent the night at the house one time. Annalisa says she doesn't know. She thinks she's done. She says that this generation is off the hook. They're off the hook. They're out of control. That's what she means by that. Annalisa says they feel entitled. They don't respect their elders. We trying to help him and he outside kicking it all night long. I think every generation says that about the generation prior. Honestly, I really do. I really do. Mark is back. You can imagine what he did last night and I don't want to talk about it <laughs> anyway. <laughs> let's move forward, please. So the young lady who they don't want to give their names. I don't see no names under these names. Okay, so ponytail because I got to, <laughs> you know how black people are. Okay, we be, we be calling people by what they wearing. So ponytail, <laughs> so ponytail asked Mark, did you get kicked out because you didn't come home last night? And lip ring back there <laughs> says, do you worry about being kicked out? in general over anything mark says he's the life of the party and her daughter is in love with me too where did you where did you get that from because i'm watching and i don't see that i see that she detests you and doesn't like you and wants to put like she wants to drop a freaking hammer on your foot but um love you just be lying i could tell you lie for a living child annalisa says that mark is doing entirely too much right now he's extremely disrespectful she says that he feels entitled like they owe him something and she says that her and veda they need to have a conversation with mark she says she wants to see where his head is and what he really wants my question is why are these girls here again and who invited them and why do they keep coming here like why are they sitting on the couch like all up in the business <sighs> I'm sorry, but I'm going to be sighing a lot. I'm going to try not to. Mark says, I know the scheduling is a little off or whatever, but is it okay if these girls stay the night here in my room? Annalisa says, where are they going to sleep at? And Mark says, in my bed. Annalisa says, that's not going to happen. She looks at the girls and she tells them, I'm sorry, but you can't stay here. Annalisa says, he's halfway in the house. There's no way you're going to be sleeping in the same bed with him. Veda says that Mark is thinking Annalisa is going to be okay with them two ladies being in the room with him. While he's here, smiling like something's funny. Annalisa says to Mark, you can't have nobody in your bed 
while you're sleeping in my house. Mark is basically saying this is just like prison. There was no women in there in the rooms either. Annalisa basically says your focus should be getting yourself together. Annalisa says she's the dictator of this house. Mark says you didn't say that over the phone. And Annalisa said you would have heard that if you was here last night. Annalisa says to Mark that we got to go over guidelines. And one thing you're not going to do is be up in my house being disrespectful. Annalisa says, I can't even believe you would ask me if some women could spend night in your bedroom. You got me all the way effed up. Annalisa says that she offered Mark to stay there so that they can help him. She says she ain't offered to help these ladies. Veda says this is not a saloon and this is not a brothel, but you sure had a big old happy Kool-Aid smile on your face when he was sitting there talking to her about having them girls in his bedroom though. You thought that was very humorous. Annalisa said, ladies, you can't stay here and Mark may not be sleeping here tonight. And then one of the girls, um, lip ring, had the nerve to say, what do you, what do you mean by that? And Annalisa says, basically, he ain't did nothing. I mean, he hasn't even spent the night, nothing. He's His focus is somewhere else. Annalisa says, you can't ask me about any woman spending the night in this house. Mark says, in my room? And Annalisa says, hell yes, which is my room. It's my room. She says that you are a guest in. And Mark tells Annalisa that she's bugging. Then Mark go outside with the rest of the bugs. Okay, because you, you about to not have no place to sleep. So Annalisa shakes the girl's hand and says, nice to meet you. And the ponytail was like, nah, that's all right. I wouldn't even let her musty ass sit on my couch. Okay, I'd have had these females outside to be quite honest with you. Annalisa, you're way nicer than I am. That's all I'm going to say. And Annalisa says, that's the reason why you're not staying in my house. And Ponytail says, I ain't want to stay here anyway. Girl, if she said, yes, y'all can come, you'd been right up in that funky bed. With <laughs> I'm sorry, Annalisa. But you would have been right up in that bed with that musty man that y'all chasing. So the ladies leave and Mark follows them. And the girls are like, you mad or something? They walking out. I think y'all mad because y'all can't spend the night in her house as I really heard differently because I thought it was Annalisa calling Mark a bitch, but no, it was one of the females, probably Ponytail, was calling Annalisa a bitch, talking about bye-bye bitch. So, girl, I'm glad you ain't let them hoes stay in your house. So, Devin is getting restless in this four-hour drive to Carissa's house. So, Devin has chosen to stay in Colorado for a few days and Daniel will be flying back to Texas today. So I guess he's coming back for Devin. I thought Devin couldn't stay with Carissa because she has kids. Where's Devin gonna stay? I can promise you he gonna try to stay with Carissa all that time, even though Carissa was saying, oh, I can't have him with me, blah, blah, blah. Obviously you can. According to Devin's parole conditions, Devin has only 72 hours to get back to Kathy and Des Devin, you about to be back in jail. So Kathy calls while they're on the road to see what was going on with everything and Daniel explains. So Daniel tells Kathy that they gave Devin a few extra days to make it to Texas and he says that he really wants to spend time with his sister. Kathy says that's not okay Daniel. Keep in mind she's in speakerphone and everybody in the car can hear her. Kathy says it's not okay for Devin to make this man fly all the way out there and say oh yeah by the way I'm gonna stay an extra three days. Kathy is angry she says it's not okay and it's not acceptable. Kathy says why didn't she know about this before you were supposed to be driving back. And Devin says when he heard Kathy's voice he's like damn is this what I'm walking into. She's getting super angry over this and he wonders if he can succeed in this type of environment. Kathy pretty much says that she's okay with it as long as Daniel is confident that it won't be an issue with Devin. So they've reached Carissa's house and Daniel says that he's driven a long way or rather he's come a long way to make sure that Devin doesn't decide to use. And I don't have closed caption on but because these people talk so mumbly and muffly um, the program has decided it's going to just put random, random captions on. So Daniel says that for all he knows he has Devin has a stash there at his sister's house or whatever and that's why he wants to stay. Daniel's hope is that Devin wants to change, but he really doesn't know what to expect. Cindy's friend Richard is on his way over and they're both going to go down and get Jennifer. Richard is a friend that she's known for about 20 years, but my question again, why did Richard not take this woman in? What scares Cindy the most about Jennifer coming is that she might possibly overdose. After talking to Angela, Cindy has a lot of concerns. Cindy says she'll be asking Jennifer a lot of questions about what she did when she was on the drugs so she knows what to look out for. Cindy says she's hoping for the best, but Jennifer is going to have to earn her trust. 
now they've reached the prison and they're waiting for Jennifer to come out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.